Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe. We're going to talk about emotional and psychological manipulation that our abusers have used on us. Sometimes it's hard to see. These are often things that are overlooked. Um, sometimes we can get confused on the purpose behind it. And often um, in these type of relationships, they like to keep track on us. Sometimes in the beginning, we're like, oh, that's so sweet. They just want to know that I got there or where I am. Um, they miss me. They're hoping to, you know, find out what time I'm coming home. Um, and so they kind of uh, portray it sometimes as caring um, or just worried about our safety, but that can be really unhealthy. Uh, sometimes it gives them a chance to um, control us. So, so we come home, so their needs are met. They're not considering what, you know, we might need some time with our friends or to take care of our family, like parents or sisters outside the home. Um, so they'll often, uh, you know, try to text us or uh, just get in contact with us over and over, keeping tabs on us. And that takes away um, from our enjoyment, uh, our, our personal time. Um, it's, it's almost like we're, we're being squashed and being held accountable as opposed to just being trusted and letting them know where we are. Um, sometimes uh, people that are narcissistic will befriend us only when it's convenient for them, um, only if it serves their purpose. So when we need something, they um, just either ghost us, give us a silent treatment, um, make up some lies on why they can't help us, but they expect us to be there when they want some something um so just be really careful uh on who you keep in your your circle of friends um it's real hard to uh, uh spot sometimes because they are such good manipulators um but sometimes they uh take our private life um and and use it to their advantage um i've had some where they're real tricky on um they they uh kind of trap you into um uh, a yes answer to them you know um where uh you know if you're like oh i just got done eating finally got the dishes done and i'm just going to relax tonight they're like oh so they find out what you're doing not because they're concerned but so you don't have a way to say um i i can't help you because they're like gonna make you feel guilty if you have a free night you know why why do you have to watch tv when i'm asking for a favor um a lot of times um they'll use a lot of uh emoticons or emojis to kind of throw things off um to twist things uh, they'll use that a lot of times on uh social media um either to get us uh irritated or agitated maybe they post something on an uh ex's um uh post like a uh, uh, heart and they're like oh i just meant i love the text it was a uh, uplifting not i love the person and and they try to stimulate something inside us because they feed off our emotions that we get jealous because that makes them feel that they're more adored um and that can be um you know done disrespectfully uh, on purpose as a way to abuse us to get um you know uh they can even say well if you were giving me more attention maybe i wouldn't be scrolling facebook bored and doing that um and and they like to confuse us uh so sometimes um when we're interacting with people they give us that sweet smile kind of lean in closer um it's more often seen uh females doing that but guys can do it too um and even just you know the tone of voice that people use the body language the closeness um but if something is uh not fitting right with what you feel to where this person's like a, a little too um not necessarily snugly snugly but kind of the warm fuzzies um or overly kind uh it, it's like they're it's almost like you can feel that they're 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 guiding you into um their realm so don't get caught up in this uh just take note this these are often um, your gut telling you there's some red flags. Often we can't always see um, somebody purposely manipulating us, but something else seem off. Just like in these narcissistic relationships, you guys are searching. That's why you're searching YouTube is like something is off. So if you're still in that narcissistic relationship, you're trying to figure it out. Um, these are, are the red flags that our body tells us. And we often, um, overlook them because we uh make excuses for our ex or we feel that you know um we're just seeing things the wrong way so we're starting to already question our reality and um 
you know, keep the boundaries up. And uh, make sure that you trust the person uh, because broken trust is really, really hard. Uh, you, you can't really rebuild something that was broken. Uh, you can try, it's never going to get back to that full trust. Um, so be in healthy relationships. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, they like to micromanage us. Um, you know, they tell us that we're in charge, but then they take that away. So it's kind of confusing to us. It's a little frustrating. Like I thought this was my project, but then you have somebody, um, micromanaging every little thing you do. Uh, and that can kind of be abusive to where you, you don't know how to act. Like, you know, I, I want to be respectful to this person, but it's also my project and I can't get my project done if you're micromanaging it. And it's also distracting and harder to concentrate. Um, and it, it just causes an unrest in us. So, you know, we feel like we're just kind of being monitored, like we're a child and um, it's just a manipulation to control us. Uh, it can feel demeaning. We can feel suffocated, sometimes humiliated. And uh, we shouldn't ignore this um, because we should be respected. So, um, you know, we can discuss it. Um, we just need to be calm. Uh, let the people know how we feel. And unfortunately, um, you know, if this pattern continues, um, you know, narcissists often don't like to readjust things. They don't like to take our uh, communication to heart. And it's, it's going to continue to be abusive. If you had a healthy relationship, um, you can work through things. But that's what's so damaging about narcissistic relationships is they don't have the empathy to relate to what we're saying. They, they, they'll hear it um and they're like okay i need to no nah, i'm not gonna process it so so they hear it and they might pull something on some things that you've said uh to get back to their control and how to twist it back around um but they're not taking your full meaning um and and, and they just discard that and it's just going to continue on um it, it kind of takes away our, our identity gives us a lot of confusion and uh, sometimes we just feel bombarded by all these expectations to where they're overwhelming to us. And, um, you know, we need to talk to them calmly uh, without getting angry. Don't flip out. Um, people react off of each other's energy. And that's why in the beginning with the love bombing, uh, they were reacting off our energy. As soon as um, they saw something, which uh, could be some little minor thing that they saw as a flaw, not necessarily even a true flaw, um, that they created this uh, false image in that ideal idealization stage. Um, and any little thing that went wrong, um, you know, you cut your hair, uh, or you, now you're wearing red lipstick instead of pink or whatever it is. Um, now something irritates them about you. Um, and it's not fair. It's not you as your soul, but something about you is not what they pictured. Um, and it, it can be the littlest tiny thing. And so the energy starts going down and we keep trying to pull it, pull it up and they bring it back down. And so sometimes they'll feed off of ours. Cause we like, yeah, we're going to work on it. And so they're like, all right. And then they're like, no. And so it, it's a constant struggle that we go through and there's no balance in these relationships. Um, and it's mind blowing because we're like, we know that these people know how to act. They know how to portray that they care. And sometimes, um, you know, there are certain things that we should overlook um, to an extent. We can't be uptight and, and us micromanaging everything. But when we start to get into that cycle, we do start analyzing every word they say. And we do that because of all the lies that we've gone through. We don't know what to trust, what to believe, um, the twists on the words that they use. Um, as an example, like I didn't sleep with her and okay, but did you have sex with her? And, and they're like, I already told you I didn't sleep with her. You just keep asking the same question. I'm asking if you had sex with her, what, do I have to tell you again? I did not sleep with her. And, and we're, we never get our answers. Um, that's um, emotional abuse that that'll get you so frustrated, leave you questioning things, starting to feel guilty. Like, yeah, you know, here I am being annoying, asking a thousand times. So now we have guilt. Now we have questions, um, you know, and it's also unfair when people try to use uh, like religious tactics um, to where 
they're they're talking about you know god's principles or values um you know uh, so especially if you guys don't even believe in the same god but a lot of times people will use god um or allah or um uh muhammad uh, you know buddha um they'll, they'll they'll use that as um a way to control you and to change your behavior or to uh, prevent you from doing certain things um, because they, they, they put the weight of God on you too. And that should be between you and your God. Um, you know what to do, you know uh, what you believe, um, what you know your morals, um, but they're, they're pushing their morals on you. Sometimes we can, uh, you know, um, kind of help somebody in their path uh, to where, you know, hey, you know, uh, just kind of correcting them um, and talking about it. like you know a bible study or, or something like that but to to um twist it around to where um i don't know let's say uh you know uh you need to honor your husband um and so you have no say in certain things uh you do need to honor him but you also are allowed to um not be a thousand percent submissive because let's say you have to take care of the baby and they're like, uh, you know, you're supposed to, I don't know, please your husband. And you're like, yeah, I get that, <laughs> you know, but uh, the, the baby just fell, it has a dirty diaper, it needs to eat. And yeah, I will, you know, do my wifely duties, but, um, you know, uh, it can't be just all at the drop of a hat. You are allowed to have some coordination in your day uh, and, and you're allowed to say no to things. Um, you should never uh, physically hurt there should be no sexual abuse or you know physical abuse um and often you know we're very forgiving um we we hear their promises um you know but if it's getting heated uh angry um you know it, it can spiral into a, a physically abusive relationship so sometimes it starts out with the the um yelling and then those yellings turn into rages and that's when the adrenaline starts kicking in a little more so now they're starting to feel um just like a drug they need a certain amount and uh so um the, like the tolerance level uh so their tolerance level for their anxiety is going up and up and up and up to where they're getting into the rage stage and then they might be physically abusive um because they are in that like childlike state they don't stop and think um often things are like split second um you know i just got off the phone with a friend of mine and um i would not say she's in the healthiest relationship and he was trying to be really nice to her um he's got some issues and uh he was like would you like this uh, for dinner and she wasn't feeling very good and he's like well then i guess i won't be making uh you know vegetables and so she said okay and then he got all ticked off at her and then uh started like cutting her down because she's not feeling good at all um and so then he's cutting down that you know she can't cook and she never does and you know um she does cook for herself she stopped cooking for him because every, every time she does he complains um there was one time you know she he, she asked would you like some butter on your vegetables and it turned into this full-blown ridiculous fight over butter on the vegetables and she's trying to be polite um she was just trying to say i don't feel good and you know go ahead and make what you want and it, it it's so crazy how would you like some butter on your vegetables I'm, I'm just asking because i usually don't but and it's you know um so damaging to stay in those kind of relationships that we either have to forgo standing up for ourselves um or get more abuse because when we start standing up for ourselves it just perpetuates a cycle of arguments and there are healthy ways to communicate um you know, sometimes we have family members that we're trying to stay in these relationships, um, whether it's grandkids or, you know, um, you like, I don't know, your sister-in-law, but not your brother. And Mark, I love you, but <laughs> I'm not talking about him. But um, just certain situations like that to where, uh, you know, we want to go to the family things, but we don't know how to handle it. Um, and so the way we can talk to certain people can minimize the triggers but narcissists have so many triggers like would you think would you like some butter on your vegetable would be a trigger that's why it's it's out of the blue like how do we handle this and then next time if you make the vegetables without 
butter, you're going to get yelled at because um, they didn't answer you. You don't know what they put butter on. Uh, you got to watch every little thing. Remember every little thing. Make sure you're walking on eggshells so you don't get yelled at. Um, and, uh, you know, we just got to really analyze the people that we're dealing with because it does cause physical damage, brain damage to us, um, you know, and we, we got to control what we feel guilty about. Um, do we really cause like an argument over butter on your vegetables or, or do we have the kind heart? Like, do we take on that? Yeah, I, I, I know he had a bad day or, you know, his childhood or this, we're making up excuses and becoming en enablers. Um, and it's changing who we are. You know, we're people who want a nice balance, um, but we don't want a false balance. We want a true balance. And the narcissist um, uh, has like an attention span um, that isn't long enough to sustain a healthy relationship. Um, because just like when they commit to things, um, they change it, whether it's, you know, marriage or, um, you know, going to Lamaze with us or, uh, you know, a lot of times they just bail um, because it's something that doesn't settle around them or takes away from something that they want to do. Um, so we ha have uh, starting to develop trust issues. So now that we're uncertain that they're going to follow through for things, we're, we're starting to seem needy. We're, you know, do you promise that you'll do that? And you make sure, and, you know, I just don't want to go through that again. And we're doing really good. And, and it, it's, you know, normally you should just be able to say, Hey, can you go with me? Excellent. I'll see you too. Um, but we're starting to have, a, we're kind of enabling them to devalue us more because we're allowing that. Um, and I remember I struggled with my second ex. I'm like, I have to devalue my, I specifically said this to him that I have to devalue myself so much just to get a response. Um, I could have walked away, you know, but I wasn't at that point in my life where I was ready to. Um, and eventually, uh, to where I'm not suicidal, but it was that bad to where, you know, like I was just crying and, and like blowing his phone up, like we're ridiculous for months, um, because of a promise of a future together. And I didn't even know if he was alive or dead. Um, and, and I'm just apologizing and, and that's a lack of empathy. Um, if that is not like some abuse, uh, to put somebody through that, to not even answer if you're alive or dead, um, especially when there was no fight, there was no argument. It was a promise and ghost. Um, and, and, and you're like using that cognitive dissonance again to where you're like, okay, he didn't call, but maybe he's dead. Uh, he did, but, and, and we're going through all uh, these things in our mind. And that's why a lot of you feel exhausted. Um, it's easier to be depressed when you're tired. Um, it leads to health issues, lower concentration, the brain fog. Now we're getting stressed at work because um, we're, we're tired. We're not uh, performing like we could. So we know um, how good we are at our job. And, you know, a lot of us take pride in that. Um, and at least to do, you know, the best that we can do or to at least fulfill what we're supposed to do at work. But now we're starting to struggle. Deadlines are starting to pressure onto us. Um, and any little thing that goes wrong, we're going to start to pick up uh, the narcissistic traits. Um, you know, they say one little thing and it's going to set us off. We're going to start having reactive abuse. Um, it's changing who we are. And we're struggling inside. That's the pain that you feel. We are struggling to hold on to ourselves, to uh, get back to who we are at heart. Um, we don't want to leave this person because we fell in love with them. Um, we have a trauma bond now. So there's, uh, you know, dopamine and serotonin and everything um, to where we're going through a withdrawal. When you start going through this withdrawal, you can't think straight. Um, or, or it gets so overwhelming that you want this quick fix. Like, okay, I, I, I need to get back with them or I just need, uh, you know, them to talk to me. And we go into a desperation mode. Um, there's so many different things that they do that are like really sneaky to where it makes us question, are we overreacting? 
Uh, do we understand it? Is it just, um, you know, I, I used a, an example in another video. Did they just use a different word that I would have? Like, if I mean I'm super extra, extra happy and I use the word happy instead of ecstatic, it has a different meaning. So we're intelligent people. We're, we're thinking through uh, their word choice, you know, uh, just like if somebody says, oh, I have a red car and you're looking for a red car and they meant maroon. So you're passing by the maroon car. It's just certain word choices um, that can kind of mess with us too. And sometimes that is just normal speech pattern. Everybody's different, different perceptions or how they grew up, word patterns, who their teachers were um, and exposures were. But the narcissist often will purposely do things like that. The psychological games that they play um, steal uh, time away from our peace because uh, instead of sitting and relaxing we're we're processing we're not relaxing we're processing so we start getting addicted to processing this is what i struggled with um and it's physically painful so if you are in one of these relationships um really take it to heart because it's physically painful even after your mind accepts things your body has to adjust because you're so addicted to processing things that you don't know how not to um so sometimes you know uh, like the narcissist stays busy uh whether they get a new supply on um, their you know don't like to be alone um because it it is something to do with all this brain activity going on um and that's why as you're adjusting back into who you are um it is good to do some things you know uh, don't pick up uh needy traits like the narcissist, don't use people, um, but rebuild good friendships or find people that you really want to spend time with. Don't latch on to an unhealthy friend just because it's somebody to spend time with. But, um, you know, as you're getting, it, it's kind of allowing you to wean yourself back into you to where, you know, um, you, you might go fishing um, or you might go do something. Uh, be careful on those kind of things too. Uh, if you're going to go fishing, um, you know, to where it, it's just sitting and thinking, um, sometimes that's hard. Sometimes that's hard. It might be better to go water skiing instead because you're active. Um, but definitely, you know, get out there in the sun. So if, if you're not going to sit there with a fishing pole and, and, and ruminate, um, if it's a healthy activity for you, uh, definitely do it or go with a bunch of buddies and, um, you know, just enjoy things. Don't don't talk about the X, you know, just enjoy the activity. And that's why it's good to have friends during this time. It's good to, uh, you know, watch these videos. The more knowledge you have, um, the more you'll be able to hear, heal because more of it will make sense. A lot of us just want validation. And when we talk to some of our friends, they, they don't understand it. You know, sometimes even therapists don't understand it because they don't, not all understand narcissistic relationships. So make sure when you talk to one that they have a specialization uh, or, or at least a, a significant exposure to dealing with narcissists. Otherwise, it's just going to be talking to an empty wall. Um, they're not going to relate to you. They're not going to help you um, because we do need our... our uh, thoughts validated because that's <laughs> I mean if, if we're in uh, therapy because we were not validated in a relationship because they wouldn't take the time to understand what we're saying um, we need a therapist that will understand what we're, we're saying at least understand it and process it maybe redirect it maybe we're not always in the right um, but you know to where they don't cut us down even more um, and that's why um, Sometimes when we watch these videos and relate to people, um, it's, that's, that's part of the healing. Like I'm not alone out in this world because sometimes right now we might feel alone. You know, we were discarded by somebody we thought we would have a life with. So we feel alone and we don't understand what happened. So sometimes when, when you hear somebody uh, and, and even in these comments, if you guys want to help each other out, tell your stories um, to where uh, yeah, you're right. There are other people that went through this. I wasn't a fool for falling for it. Other people were tricked. Um, you know, uh, it's something that moving on 
we can heal from and we can watch out for the red flags. I got some videos on red flags, so do other YouTubers. Um, but please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.